Hi, our guest today is Harold Rhodes, who is the town of Milford's representative or delegate, delegate. to the Metro delegate. West Regional Transportation Authority, uh, better known as the MWRTA. Harold. Thank you very much for, for having me here to talk about transportation, public transportation here in Milford. How did we get a delegate to the MWRTA? Or, or why are we why, doing this? First of all, why don't you describe the issue? The, let's talk about the problem. What, what's yeah. the issue? Okay. So, um, as, uh, as a member of the uh, Commission on Disability, and then later as chairman of the Commission on Disability, the number one question, the number one concern, the number one complaint that I received was about the lack of transportation in Milford. Now, what are you talking about, though? I could get my car and drive anywhere in Milford. It has to do with the availability of, you know, fixed route and dial-a-ride um, public transportation. Let me give you an example. If you live in, in let's say, Attleboro, you can actually take a bus to Milford Regional Hospital. Yes, you can. If you live in Holliston, you can take a bus to Milford Regional Hospital. But if you live in Milford? But if you live in Milford, there is no bus to take you to the hospital, to the cancer center, to, uh, to Kennedy Donovan Health Center, or anywhere else. I want to go to Milford. Coles and shop. And there's no bus to take you there. And, you know, that's an actually very interesting question, which you just raised there. We have folks that have to shop at the local 7-Elevens and Tedeschi's because they're, you know, uh, that's the only thing that's convenient nearby. Which raises a whole nother issue is nutritional issues. Is but let, let's, let's stick to transportation, but why don't we have bus service? Well, I know that there's a long history of uh, public transportation here in Milford, and frankly, I don't understand all of it, but the simple answer is... We had the trolley in the 20s and 30s. We had the trolley in the right, 20s which, and 30s. And then the car, the car companies basically mm -hmm. did here what they did around the country, is through shell companies, they bought up the trolley companies, put them out of business, so you'd buy an automobile. Right, and, and so uh, as, the, as the MWRTA developed, uh, those cities through which uh, the MBTA went through used the assessment that was right. being paid for the MBTA to pay for their service for the MWRTA. So for those towns, the, for those towns like Framingham or Natick, didn't cost them anything because they were just using the money that they were already paying for right. service for the MBTA. Well, Milford doesn't have that okay. service. So if we were going to do it, it would be monies that would have to come directly from Milford. And then since 1980, Proposition 2.5 make that a little bit harder to get that a right. new large chunk of money spent on something. And I think the population in 1980, 1985 was younger and perhaps, you know, could have accepted the fact that there wasn't public transportation. And you had a thriving downtown. And we had a thriving downtown. But now, 15, 20 years later, 30 years later, the, you know, the population's gotten older. The senior center's been developed, the youth center's been developed, and there's all sorts of other facilities in and around Milford that folks want to be able and to get to. And there really is no way to get from one side of town to the other right now except by car. And people are moving out of the downtown area. Yes. So what happens is you have everything going to the suburbs. The strip malls and, and the suburbs. I'll, I'll tell you the story that Sue Clark, the director of the senior center, sells. You know, we have this beautiful senior center. And you've been in it and mm -hmm. it's wonderful. Right. But if you're a senior and you don't have transportation and you live in one part of Milford, you can't get to, to the, the senior center. What about center. the senior van? The senior van is for those persons who have medical needs first and foremost. It only, run, it only runs for a few hours right. each day. Right. So it has a primary mission which largely takes up all of the time for persons who are uh, medically disabled and meeting a number okay. of requirements. So if I am a senior citizen and I do need to get to a doctor's office, I can go through the senior center to, yes, to get there? Yes, maybe. It depends if it's available. If it's available. And not previously booked. And not previously booked. And since they only have one van with 10 seats, they have a very difficult time Managing the f flow. Okay. Managing the flow. In fact, Sue would tell you they, they have many, many more requests than they are able to fulfill, okay. which is, which is very dis disappointing. So, so we've kind of identified the problem. Now, I remember four or five years ago, the MWRTA approached the town, it might be t seven or eight years ago, approached the town about wanting to increase the one little 
uh, small senior center size bus that comes in in the morning from Framingham and goes You're back right. out at night. Right. And the town felt the money wasn't worth it at the time. How did you then go to them and convince them to appoint you as the town's delegate and research this? Well, with, um, with the data that uh, was coming in word of mouth, mm -hmm. um, I had a chance to sit down with the board, or make a presentation to the board of selectmen. Last when fall. I, last fall when, right. I, when, when I explained, you know, this is the number one, number two, number three issue that we're facing on the Commission on Disability. And as far as I can tell, it's the same issue which many other organizations and individuals are facing. Businesses, medical, seniors, <laughs> shoppers. You, you, you name it. You name it. Transportation is, the, is the, one of the largest issues because we, we're involved in another board, but both of us are. And but so I think the selectmen already knew this. I don't think that this, was, right. that this came as any surprise to them. So I laid out a process which would be um, that Milford... <coughs> join the MWRTA. Now all that really means is we are allowed to send a person to the MWRTA meetings. Which is you. And which the, the uh, selectmen um, appointed me as the delegate. And so that the MWRTA would assist us in developing a plan to bring fixed route bus service to Milford. Okay. Um, so as fixed well. route, just, just for people who aren't used to the term, doesn't mean I can call if it comes to my house. It might mean I have to walk to the nearest major intersection. So we're actually going to have both fixed route bus service as well as what they call dial a ride, okay. which many people have seen. So fixed route is just like that. It's a bus service, not unlike uh, bus service that you see for, for school children. Or in, in Boston or, or in any major metropolitan. It'll and there'd be a route with a schedule, a but, route it, with a schedule. but if I lived in say, uh, you know, two blocks off South Main Street, I might have to walk to South Main Street to the bus stop. And and we get to decide the route, not the MWRTA. They'll help us, right. but we get to decide how now, and what We're not talking about big tour bus size things. No. We're they, not talking about school bus size buses. We're talking about the same... Uh, I, uh, they're 14 I, seat. 14 seat vans that people see at um, airport parking lots right. uh, in hotels. Boston. Hotels. Hotels. Yeah, hotels. Uh, senior centers. Uh, they're not behemoths by any means. And they'll be handicapped accessible. And they will all be oh, handicapped accessible. So if, um, if, if it turns out that the fixed route that, we have got, that we've laid out isn't exactly the one that we want to have, we can change that fixed route so it'll be right. more accommodating to, to, to people. So we'll work through what exactly should be the, the fixed route. So, so where have we gone? You, you're doing ongoing research. So let me say that on the basis of joining the MWRTA and being appointed uh, the delegate to the MWRTA, I prepared a report for the selectmen where I went to all of the you know, constituent organizations and I asked them if we had, if we had um, public bus, how many people would make, make available? So I wanted to prepare um, you know, a demand analysis to show you know, what is exactly the amount of folks that would be using um, public transportation so if I, we should have it here in Milford. So I know you went to the Chamber of Commerce, wow. the churches, the hospital, medicals, the hospital, and other meta, uh, Edward Milford M. Kennedy Center. Milford Housing Authority. I don't. Let's be right. sure we add yeah. the Milford, Milford Housing, Housing Authority, Authority and the Senior Center and the Senior and Center others. And, and and others, especially the hospital. And the result was that there would be substantial. Oh. In, o in other words, there wouldn't be empty buses. We would not have empty buses. In fact, my biggest concern is will we need, need more, more buses, buses than, than what we have currently planned to do. What did you, how many buses did you uh, is on the, in the plan right now? Well, right now, one bus, which would run 13 hours a day, 6.30 in the morning to 7.30 at night. Oh, wow. And it would around the town. Around the town, and depending on how long the route is, makes on how many times around the town. Now, that same bus will connect into the bus service that goes to fr uh, goes to uh, Framingham. So anybody here who lives in Milford could actually get on a bus yeah. here and take it all the way down to Mass General. Would it connect to mm -hmm. also the Greater Attleboro Transport Authority, which comes out of Franklin and Bellingham? Absolutely. So we would connect into the MWRTA service, which has its own connection services to the other RTAs. So, so theoretically, someone could get on a bus, walk a block or two blocks, get on a bus, 
and ride that bus all the way to the train station. Yes. Get on the train. They'd have to transfer. But they'd they'd have transfer. Yeah. Well, transfers, I mean, that, that's okay. anybody's used bus. So we've taken care of the east, but we, it, it, there wouldn't be any connections toward the west because there are no bus services outside of uh, the closest bus service west of Milford now is the, uh, the Worcesters. Worcesters. Punches up to the new Milford uh, Hospital facility in Northbridge, but then it goes back towards Worcester. Right. Nothing comes in between. But you'd at least have the eastern focus. Well, that yeah. makes so, a dr dramatic, dramatic okay. impact on the hospital. Dramatic right. impact. But it also means, theoretically, I could drive to somewhere in Milford. I live in Menden. I could drive to somewhere in Milford and take a bus in from Milford versus parking in Franklin. Which is, by everybody's concern, the issue of uh, crowded roads, the issues of the, just the plain economics yes. of public transportation, forgetting everything else, everybody recognizes. It'll reduce, there'll be a tremendous reduction in that. On congestion. But and this it, is what everybody wants to be done so we can free up the highways. But it also means that somebody without a car that lives, say, on Prospect Street near the hospital could theoretically take a bus to stop and shop to go grocery shopping. Absolutely. Where right now the only choice of getting there is to walk five miles or take a car. Yes, and it's mm -hmm. very, very disappointing, especially if you're a person who's got limited mobility. Right. Or limited means. Or limited means. And uh, if you, you know, for the example from Pat Morrill. Or can't say, drive a car. Or can't drive a car. They, as, they, as you get older, you know, a lot of people just can't or won't. Well, and Pat Morrill, who's the executive director of the Milford Housing Authority, says, you know, we have folks at all of the, you know, uh, housing authorities, and they have a great deal of difficulty getting to just, say, grocery shopping. Right. And it's a very difficult issue for them, and they very much want to see public transportation that would go to Birmingham Court or wherever. Wherever, the, right. So yeah. as to be able to allow folks to go shopping. And at least close access to them. Yes. Right. Well, so, so now the next step is, you look at the need, you've talked about in town. I mean, if, if you present it to me, my next step is, okay, how much is it going to cost me? Well, let me continue on. So I went okay. back to the, went back to the, uh, to the selectmen, and I must, I, I need to add that besides all the organizations that provided their demand analysis, I went to see all of the clergy mm -hmm. in Milford. There are uh, 11 major, um, major religious organizations here in Milford, and I went to see each one of the clergy members at St. Mary's, at Sacred Heart, at First Baptist, at, at Uni Unitarian, every one of them, and explained that this is what I was doing. I was developing a report, and you know, what are their perspectives on this? Is this something important? And if it is, could you put your name on this report? I was very glad that all 11 members of the clergy signed the report to say to the selectmen, this is something important to be done. Our parishioners Want have it. said to them they need transportation. Okay. So here I've got the you know, data, hard, hard data from each of the organizations, and here I have from each of the religious organizations. So it goes back to the uh, Board of Selectmen, and as you can imagine, it was very, very well received. They understand what needs to be done. They have more questions that they would like to see me have answered, and I said that it would be done. And the next step then, as you just said, was to begin to look uh, for the timing and the amount of money. I mean, is it going to be free for the average person? Do they uh, get on and pay nothing? Or do they get on and pay a, a quarter or 50 it's, cents? It's a very manageable $1.50. Now, if you are if you are uh, disabled or senior, it's even less than that. Okay. I think it's just a dollar, which oh. compares very favorably to okay. to um, but, but, other other ways of transportation. Right. But, but just so people listening don't think this is starting tomorrow, is there a, a time frame? I mean, getting anything like this started, going through governmental processes, oh, wow, it's got to take a year or two more. Well, that's exactly right, Kevin. Um, so this just began the process, and this is the sort of thing that the monies have got to be appropriated. Found. And found. Or appropriated. Found, appropriated, and first voted on by the selectmen that they support this. Then it needs to go to uh, the finance committee, and then it will need to go to town meeting. Okay. And we've generally, we're not specifically saying this, hope to plan for a, an article to provide funds for... Um, uh, public transportation at the May 2016 wow. meeting. Okay, so that's a year from this meeting. 
It couldn't have been done this year because of the other priorities that Milford had already set two and three years ago with the building of the schools and right. the, and the Well, you, you also have to finish figuring out what this is going to cost right. and then how it's going to be based. And sizing so, it and all, and sizing all kinds, it. Of, all kinds so, of things that have to be done. So actually, I was very pleased that it was only going to be well, I Just, think that's a very aggressive time frame, it, personally. It, it is, very and, I, and I'm hopeful, and we're going to do everything we can, and we'll see. I mean, let's that's just very say, aggressive. We're very aggressive, but we'll see, and I'm going to keep trying very hard to get it done so that sometime in 2016 we can start this. But if it goes to 2017, that'll be okay, too. That's still very good. It's still very good, <laughs> and it's so very important to, to, Mil to, to Milford and right. to now, all if, the folks if, who if live here. If people think this is a great idea... Um, or if they don't, is there somebody they can contact? Well, first of all, they should always feel free to contact any of the selectmen. Okay. That's first and foremost. An email note to explain to the selectmen what their need is is always a good idea, as it is for any issue that, that anybody in Milford has is to talk to the selectmen. Okay. I'd, I'd also add to Rick Villani, our town administrator. Now, he keeps, you know, all the data on all the, the requests for, to, you know, for, for public transportation. But of course, it can come to me as well or any of the other members of the Milford Commission on Disability. Okay. And I add my comments, add it to some other thoughts, and share it with the selectmen as well as the, as well as the town administrator. But as we said, I think everyone now understands that the demand is substantial, that it right. is an important thing for Milford to do. Um, there are 13 communities within the Metro West Regional Transport Authority. 12 of them have bus service. Mm -hmm. Only one doesn't, and that would be Milford. Oh, wow. Now, now. So, so uh, uh, while late to the party, we're, we're going to be. Okay, now, but on the rare case, uh, I, I got to state my bias. I grew up in the greater New York City area in New Jersey where mass transit was available on any street corner. You could go anywhere for within a half an hour. You could be in New York City. I could be in, uh, in, in an uh, hour and a half. I'd be at the Jersey Shore. Uh, I'm very used to rapid transit. I went to college in Rhode Island. They have RIPTA, which is a fantastic service. Um, came to Mass this part of Massachusetts, like, where's the transit? So I, I, I'm a believer in it. But on the rare occasion, this doesn't work out. Let's just say we establish it, we try it out for a year or two, and it doesn't work out. Is the town locked into it? No, we signed an agreement with the MWRTA. Yeah. And the, the agreements are, the first agreement will be for two years, and then they run for three years. Mm. Okay, so okay? there's always an out. There's absolutely an out. And they want to be sure, uh, the MWRTA has a fabulous outreach program. Okay. And they will, once we get going, bring their own folks here to Milford and have outreach programs with all the different groups so that folks who are seniors know how to access it. Folks who are at the hospital yeah, know actually, how to I'm access it. I'm actually afraid that you'll overwhelm one bus, bus very quickly. Oh, I, I would well, it's a I concern. Would, I would suspect that, that's, that the one bus will last for a very short period of time and it's going to be more than two. And, and, and as, I, as I've indicated, I put Milford not on the same level as a Holliston or a Hopkinton. We're more on the level of a Marlboro yeah. or even a Natick. A Framingham. A Framingham. Right. Because mm -hmm. we are a city with, the, with city kinds of needs. And yes. those all have, much, have more than well, one you, bus you, running. You also have the way the shopping centers have developed. You know, they're out on 109. They're on 140 and going towards Hopedale. They're on 140 going to Upton. They're on the main street in town and they're on uh, 16 going to Holliston all the little strip malls and that's where they've gone because that's where the land is and the zoning but the people are still not really you have a dis distribution. The majority of them are not right. near them the distribution of population is, is in, in this community is was set up on a small community basis where everybody lived around a core a core, and so as a result, and that was the factory. That was the, the shops. So what happens changed. is everybody is the, the housing is around this core, and so the land that was available for big shopping areas is outside. So that's why things are moving outside. And you bring up a very good point, and this is why the uh, Chamber of Commerce, the Milford Chamber of Commerce, supports bringing public bus system because they know it's going to impact economic development in a very positive way. It's going to bring more shoppers, whether in Milford or, or even out of Milford, right. to Coles. might let people to get to work. 
as People well as... People will use it to get to work, too. As well as we see that there are a number of job openings. You drive around Milford, you'll see that it says, you know, people want it. Well, one of the problems is, is transportation, getting to those jobs. And if we can have reliable transportation running from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., Bingo. folks can get jobs at I grocery mean, stores or wherever. Or, where, or wherever. And now we see why the chamber yeah. representing the business community is very behind. I was going to say, it's a long walk to Target from the downtown area when it's 95 degrees outside, it, or, or, 20 or, or 20 degrees. 20 degrees. <laughs> or if you're in the hotels up on up on North Fort, Fortune Boulevard and you want to go some shopping. Just you How about a nice restaurant? Or a nice restaurant, still the same thing. But also let me add the importance of public transportation for the hospital. Okay. Um, that's, you know, the, the, the others are important, but having transportation for the hospital is critical. The, 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 the very sad, and that's all you can say is they're heartbreaking stories people have called me or other folks with about not being able to get to the cancer center. Here we have the, one of the most wonderful jewels that any community could ever have, uh, uh, Dana-Farber, right here. But folks who live in Milford have the greatest difficulty getting to our own cancer center. And the hospital is, is in such dire need and they oh, have expressed well, this consistently but the argument i've heard harold is and why aren't they paying for the tran for some of the transportation system well i believe that that um they will be and i've never really had this discussion with their with their with their folks is like the other hospitals they'll providing inter interdepartmental or inter uh, hospital unit transportation but they won't be providing transportation from individuals to the hospital and that's right. how it is in, you know, in Boston. So if you need to get from one hospital to another hospital, there's transportation. But, but, but to you, get to the hospital area. But to get to the hospital area, you have, you to, take take the, you have to take a bus. So, and, and that's, that is the general direction I expect that well, they're it, going it, to go. Well, it'll do, it'll do several things. In the case of the hospital, you're absolutely correct that the access to the hospital, not, not emergency, but to the doctors. To yes, the, to the doctors. To, the, to, the, to those things. But one of the things that's occurred, because because there's limited access or hard to get to the hospital, they're not using the other facilities, which puts a burden on the emergency room. That's so, so, true. so what happens is, is that with, hosp with, with, with the uh, bus system or transportation, now that can move those services, those, those services out to where they're not emergencies, where there's a treatment center without overloading the emergency well, I, I think most people don't realize, but if you go to the hospital emergency room and they decide you should be a patient at Edward Kennedy Center, uh, how do you get from 1 under 140 to well, that's, that's down the, the block? And then you go to your doctor's appointment at Edward Kennedy or any doctor's office, and they recommend you have a test at the hospital proper. How do you get there if you don't have a car? And I think it's, w what happens is you get into the realm of thought, well, I have a car, so everybody has a car. I can walk, so everybody can walk. I'm not disabled, so everybody's not disabled. And you don't realize how many people don't drive unless you volunteer at a senior center um, or look at the lower income people in a town and realize they're all walking all the time. Kevin, you're so correct. I mean, as we just said, the issues associated with hospital, with medical care in Milford are critical. We have one of the best hospitals in the nation within, within a short hop of several communities. I mean, I, I don't think people realize now that somebody going to the Dana-Farber Brigham and Women's Cancer thing in Boston that lives out here are, set, are actually told in Boston, why are you coming out here? It's the same doctors, the same service in your backyard, and that's if you live in Hopedale, Benton, Uxbridge, right. or if you live in Natick, they're going, why are you driving to Boston? We're in Milford. And it's only gonna get better. When the new when the new emergency area is finished, they're gonna bring some more pediatric services. So We already have Children's Hospital in the emergency room, well, right? But we're gonna have even more on, yes. on, it's not gonna be on call, they're gonna be on staff. So, I mean, the improvements that are gonna be in the hospital are fantastic, and, and the transportation will be such, an, a, such a tremendous adjunct to that. We're talking about people's lives. lives. So Harold, since, since Al lives in Upton and I live in Menden, you know, when you get done solving the transportation problem in, uh, in Milford, can we ask you to do something for us? <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> you, know, you know, we do have these, these, these lines 
but I'm hopeful we can find a way to work around these lines. Well, they tore up the, the trolley system. It used to be that you could take a trolley from Upton to Mil and that's where everybody came to shop. They came to Milford. They'd take a trolley. They'd and we had, we had the trolley from Lakeview Park in, right. in, in Milford. When it actually went right past my backyard in Menden <laughs> on the Hopedale line and went right down into downtown Milford, bringing the people up until the trolley disappeared. So whether you're a person who needs medical care or maybe you need emergency medical care or maybe you need cancer care or if you're a person living in a housing authority and you need to get to shopping or you're uh, a person who's living in a scattered sheltered site and you don't want to shop at the local 7-Eleven or maybe you want to get a job at one of the places that are open but you just don't have a car so many to go things. to. So many things. Or or you're living in Holliston and you want to go shopping at Kohl's. You know, very good for everybody. Yeah, let's, let's not forget, if it's Metro West you're talking about, all those people from Birmingham on down would be able to, to shop Absolutely. at any place or eat at any place in Milford by a quick bus ride. Or have access to the hospital conveniently. Absolutely. So it, 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 would, broaden, it would broaden access to not just Milford, to other communities, surrounding communities access to medical care. And when you and when you think about just not medical care, but you know, as you just said, all of the very fine restaurants we have here in Milford will now be available across the across ours and other communities. So for all of these reasons, there's been an overwhelming demand. And the support has just got to be the selectmen jumping on this one, I would guess. Yes, both, I, both feet. Both feet, and we have to do our due diligence. We got to be sure we're getting, you know, the best um, uh, um, value for our money. Bang for your buck, yeah. And make sure that we've got the, you know, all the things lined up so that things are well taken care of when it does start. And, and, and anybody who could contribute beyond the taxpayers are contributing. And anyone beyond the taxpayers of Milford are providing funds, funds to us, to do this, and. Um, you know, I'm very confident Sounds that this like is going to that this is going to happen. You know, in in less time than longer. You, it sounds to me like the due diligence that you've uh, invested in this has been just remarkable, tremendous. Thank in you. a short period of time, you've got more information and you have more insight into what's going on and what's needed, and you've you've made contact with all the various uh, people and, and organizations that would take advantage of it, so you can you know, make a compilation of all those things and say, we don't need just one bus or we don't need just one. This is the place it has to go. It's, that's fantastic. Yes. That's, uh, you know, so the selectmen have done a good job in letting you go run with this. Well, Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be helping the community and I look forward to having our bus service start in, this, in, the, in the nearest future possible. That's great. And that said, we're out of time. So Harold, Thank we'll you. get you back when it's up and running. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Appreciate it.